the dusty streets of Maikona, in Kenya's remote north. Here on the edge of the Chalbi Desert, water is a scarce resource, and herders from miles around are drawn to this settlement's precious wells to quench their animals' thirst. But one species is particularly well adapted to life in this harsh climate. In northern Kenya, there are three people who are keep, keeping camels. The Gavra community, the Rendille, uh, and the Somali. My, my parents have been keeping camels since 1840. It's a time-tested livelihood that Tumal pursues alongside his young son and one that holds a central place in the cultural rhythms of local life. Gabra performs a lot of rituals, marriages, the rituals performance of a, is very senior a elder who dies. It has to be accompanied by camels. In Gabra community, if you don't, if you don't have camels, you are nobody. But even in this timeless landscape, history does not stand still. While old traditions remain important, the changing climate is placing new demands on the pastoralist way of life. Like now, it's dry, but camels are giving milk. You will get milk, but you, the, the vegetation is scanty. Even, you, even this place is dry. It was just a small drizzling. We never got any rain, but milk with the camel is there. We're here in the Tericha grazing fields at the foot of the Huri Hills in Kenya's Marsabit County. Now, most of the Gabra camel herders in this area trek their camels on a two-day walk into Mykona to look for water before coming back again to find fresh pasture. But new innovations like rainwater catchment and water trucking are opening the path to commercialization and upscaling the camel herding enterprise. Camel has been kept in pastoral areas as a prestige animal in the first place. A man who doesn't have a camel then is believed to be not even a man. So we, you fight to get the camel to ensure that you are recognized as a man. Now, from that angle now, we are moving away from that. We are looking at now commercial aspect of it and economic aspect of the camel. Dynamics is changing. Camels are changing from uh, being a camel keeper, being an important person, prestige, but moving towards also commercialization. Recognizing the economic opportunity that a drought-resistant form of livestock can provide, the younger generation is stepping up to ensure that centuries of traditional knowledge can be updated to keep with the times. Uh, for one, you get to understand the informal, there's informal education out there. You get to learn to, how to be on yourself, okay? And take over the, the work that uh, our parents have uh, done. Pooling funds to truck in water and dig deep wells does away with the need to trek camels over land to quench their thirst, allowing for more intensive herding with less precarious results. I'm not saying that we do away with also the old, old, old practices, uh, rather intermarry with the, with the, with the newer, new technology. We cannot stand at one place. Things have to change. Coming up in the series. The middlemen are the ones who are normally uh, exploiting the, the farmers. A lot of camels are being bought. The, the big bulls have been sold off. But now we're asking ourselves, are we not losing our genetics, best genetics? Herders have worked out that selling camels for export can turn a profit. But is it the best way to commercialize this vital natural resource? We'll head to East Africa's largest camel trading center to find out. <laughs> 